you're all well and happy today. We're going to get back into our very basic Bible study, looking at the book of Judges. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 14, which talks about the marriage of Samson. Last time we talked about his birth and how God had placed him under a Nazarite vow to set him apart to accomplish some things that uh, God had in store. We're going to see that uh, Samson doesn't always cooperate with this. Um, but let's see how all this plays out. Chapter 14, verse 1. Then Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now the Philistines were not uh, overpowering in their number, but they had, uh, were exercising a lot of influence over the children of Israel. There was a lot of intermarriage going on. The children of Israel were sinning in God's eyes and that they were uh, worshiping the gods of these Philistines. But there was a social interaction between them and uh, some inter inter intermarriages between the Philistines and the Israelites. So let's see what happens here in verse two. So he came back and told his father and mother, I saw a woman in Timnah, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me as a wife. Well, they weren't supposed to be doing that. They weren't supposed to be intermarrying, but this was commonplace that was going on. And in those days, the parents were the ones that would arrange the marriages. And so he's saying, get this uh, girl for me. He hasn't even talked to her yet, but uh, I guess she was appealing to his eyes. He saw something there that uh, uh, made him want to have her as a wife. That's possible that he actually saw in her the uh, opportunity to get back at the Philistines somehow. But, and some commentators have pointed in that direction, but I think it's likely he just liked her. And uh, I don't think he really has God's will on his mind at this time. Verse 3, Then his father and his mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your relatives or among all of, all of our people that you go to take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Go get her for me, for she looks good to me. Uh, the Philistines were one of the groups in the area that uh, were not circumcised. There were other peoples in the area that did. So this was a put down. The father's putting them down and uh, saying, can't you find somebody that under the law is legal for you to marry under the Jewish law? But Samson's uh, steadfast here. He says, get her for me, for she looks good to me. Verse 4. However, his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. Now at that time, the Philistines were ruling over Israel. They were in power over the children of Israel. Uh, they were, uh, and as such, were oppressing the children of Israel in the localized areas, uh, both spiritually and uh, economically. His father and mother didn't realize that God had a plan in this, just like uh, you and I today. A lot of things happen that we don't realize is part of God's plan. It's only when we look back over circumstances and things that happen that we realize, you know, God's hand was in that. He had a reason for doing that, but they couldn't see it. Verse 5, Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother, and came as far as the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion came roaring toward him. This would have been a full-grown, youthful lion, very vigorous and aggressive. Pretty scary situation. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, so that he tore him as one tears a kid, though he had nothing in his hand, but he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. This is a way that they would butcher young goats. You just grab them by the hind legs and tear them apart, split them. 
uh, it's pretty gross to us, but apparently his strength was such that he was able to do this to this young lion. And of course that gave him the message that, hey, you know, I've got a lot of strength here. Apparently since this encounter was with him and the lion alone, his parents had already gone ahead to make some arrangements to obtain this young girl as his wife. Verse seven, so he went down and talked to the woman and she looked good to Samson. Usually there would be no conversation between man and woman until marriage had been decided upon. So apparently this was a done deal at the time. Verse eight, when he returned later to take her, he turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion and behold a swarm of bees and honey were in the body of the lion. Now it says when he returned to take her, it may have taken up to a year for all the uh, formalities of the marriage and everything to be decided and all the details to be worked out. So this isn't like uh, the next day or anything. So this carcass has been uh, rotting alongside the road for quite a long time. Uh, and bees had taken up residence in the body of the lion. So he scraped the honey into his hands and went on, eating as he went. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they ate it, but he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey out of the body of the lion. This would have been an unclean act uh, for a Nazarite, or any Jew for that matter, to touch a dead human body would make them unclean even a, an animal body, and there was some ritualistic cleaning that uh, would have to go on. So he didn't tell them uh, where he got the honey, he just gave it to them. You know, originally the fact that he had turned aside to go into this uh, vineyard was really in contra uh, contrary to his Nazarite vow, because not only were the Nazarites not to drink alcoholic beverages, but not even to eat grapes or grapes of skin or anything like that. So you can already see that he's got this uh, either uh, an attitude of not caring or outright breaking God's law consciously. At this point, it's likely he just doesn't care. He's just going along and doing what he wants. Verse 10, then his father went down to the woman and Samson made a feast there for the young men customarily did this. And it came about when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. These are probably men that were provided by the girl's father, parents. Uh, customary type situation. Now we're going to see something unfold that uh, seems kind of strange to us, but let's see what happens. Then Samson said to them, let me now propound a riddle to you, if you will indeed tell it to me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 linen wraps and 30 changes of clothes. He's saying, I'm gonna give you a riddle. If you figure the riddle out, you're gonna get some uh, clothing out of it. But if you are unable to tell me, then you shall give me 30 linen wraps and 30 changes of clothes. And they said to him, propound your riddle that we may hear it. So they agree to this, uh, this, these terms. Verse 14, so he said to them, out of the eater came something to eat and out of the strong came something sweet, but they could not tell the riddle in three days. They got seven to do it, but in three days they can't figure it out. And of course we can see the riddle out of the eater, that's the lion, came something to eat, that's the honey. And out of the strong, Again, the lion, something sweet. Again, the honey. So unless they knew about this act, they're probably not going to figure this out. Verse 15. Then it came about on the fourth day that they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband that he may tell us the riddle, lest we burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us to impoverish us? Is this not so? They think they've been tricked and they're upset and they are threatening her and her family. And Samson's wife wept before, 
And Samson's wife wept before him and said, You only hate me, and you do not love me. You have propounded a riddle to the sons of my people and have not told it to me. And he said to her, Behold, I have not told it to my father or mother, so should I tell you? She's saying, uh, you've, you've come up with this riddle, but you haven't even told me about it. And he said, I haven't told my mother and father, so why should I tell you about it? Verse 17, However, she wept before him seven days while their feast lasted. And it came about on the seventh day that he told her because he, she pressed him so hard she then told the riddle to the sons of her people. I guess uh, even though there were threats, that uh, even beyond that, she still had some loyalty to her people, the Philistines. But uh, uh, clearly she's nagging him to death and he gets tired of it and he tells her the riddle. So the men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. So he's telling them, You only found this out because of my wife. You used my wife to find out the reason behind this riddle, or the solution to the riddle. So he's upset. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of them and took their spoil and gave the changes of clothes to those who told the riddle. And his anger burned, and he went up to his father's house. Now, Ashkelon would have been 20, 25, 30 miles away, a town that was very antagonistic, antagonistic to the Israelites. And so it was probably easier for him to go down there and either pick a fight or an amb ambush or whatever, uh, kill these 30 Philistine enemies. Now keep in mind that as a judge, Samson's not like the previous judges we've read about that trained up the people and uh, spiritually and militarily and went out and with a big army to defeat these uh, tribes that were oppressing them. No, as we said before, he's going to be Israel's champion. He's going to do things that makes the Israelites admire him, uh, want to follow him, uh, use him as an example of uh, resistance. And so here, he's done this uh, act alone, killing 30 men. And I'm sure this is going to get around later. But for now, it's just to take their clothes and give to the people that solved the riddle. It's an act of expediency on his part. Whether he was thinking about anything that the Lord wanted him to do or not, we don't know. But God was certainly clearly using him. But Samson's wife was given to his companion who had been his friend. So in his anger, he didn't go back to his wife on the seventh day of this feast. He went back to his father's. And this would have been a slap in the face to the parents of the bride. It's almost as if he was annulling the wedding. Hard for us to understand these customs that were in place back then. But what the father does is okay. He gave his daughter to the companion like the best man as a face-saving deal. And that would have been an all right situation if in fact Samson had left for the purpose of annulling the marriage. We're, we're gonna see that this is gonna have some really awful results in the next chapter, but we're gonna stop here for today. Keep in mind that this is all part of the downward spiral of the children of Israel forsaking their God, looking at other gods, uh, continually sinning against the Lord. So we see things just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Even with Samson, who is God has tried to set apart to do his will, even Samson is involved in some stuff that makes us shudder. 
Anyway, I hope this has been meaningful to you and you'll watch the next one when we see the results of a marriage. In the meantime, God bless. Bye-bye.